Okay, this video comes in response to a question. Somebody sent me a video clip asking how to kind of uh, remove a person out of the background that wasn't supposed to be there. I think it was during the recording of a, of a music video or something. I'm going to bring that clip in really quick. Here's that clip. I'm going to create a composition out of it. And the person was asking me how to get rid of, I guess they're shooting this music video and this random guy walked into the background there and they did not want that random guy in the background there. They want to remove him so it looks like there's nobody there. So we're going to show how to do that with that 3D camera tracking. First of all, I'm going to go up to my arrangements here. Click on my arrangements and tell it to arrange by motion tracking, which I'm already in. So I've got this little panel here. And uh, for this one here, I've already tried to, I've, I've done the motion tracking once. And the motion tracking does not do too well at the beginning because it's got, you'll see this kind of motion blur over here. Uh, so it kind of loses tracking points a little bit at the beginning and then it kind of stabilizes. To fix that, I'm going to hit track camera. It will start tracking immediately, but I'm going to kind of ignore that. I'm going to go under advanced and for the more difficult tracks, unless the thing's going absolutely, your shot's going absolutely nuts, then and it just probably won't track anyway. You can go in here and check mark detailed analysis. In detailed analysis, it'll start tracking over again. It'll take longer. It'll take longer to solve the, the image as well. It will do more of a detailed track. It will really nitpick this and, and try to get the best track possible. And I found on this image specifically, the detailed analysis uh, tracking takes a little bit longer, especially on the solving portion, but it is uh, it makes it it's worth it because it does a much better track of this of this image. And sometimes you don't need that. If there's not a lot of frantic movement in your shot, you really don't need the detailed analysis. So, so let's let that track and we'll come back and show you the results. Okay, now that the track is finished, uh, we've got some tracking points uh, showing back here on the trees. And uh, there are some, like I can see as I move my mouse around here, I can see there's some tracking points right around here. I kind of want to choose some around this area because I'm going to be taking out this, look at this guy. I'm going to be covering him up with a, some, uh, some footage uh, from this area right here, from that distance away from the camera, so this is gonna, it'll have the most accurate tracker, or it'll have the most accurate uh, look for it, I guess you could say, uh, uh, for this plane here in the in the shot. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my track point size. I'm going to actually bring this way because I know there's some track points there, but I don't know how I can't really see them that well. So I'm going to increase these to a thousand percent here, so just like oh, those get really big, but I'm going to move past those ones in the foreground. And now you can actually see some of those tracking points. I'm going to option, hold down option or alt on a PC and scroll with my mouse and you can see these points there on the ground. So I'm going to try to find something at about the same plane, meaning like the same distance away from the camera where this guy is here. Maybe right about there. Let's give that a try. Or something that's kind of sitting on the ground. Maybe like right there. That looks like that target makes it look like. Let's increase my target size as well. Looks like that target is kind of sitting flat on the ground right there. So I'm going to right click on this and say create solid and camera. And it'll generate a camera there and a solid sitting flat on the ground. And with that you've got your Y axis, your X axis, and your Z axis. Your, your X axis should be going horizontally and your Y axis is going vertically. So right now this is actually pointing upwards this way. So uh, we're going to do some changes there. I'm going to go to the track solid here just to get that looking directly at us, like kind of like the guy is here. And I'm going to go Z rotation and rotate it so the X is pointing to the right. And then I'm going to lift it upwards with the, with the Y. So there we go. So this thing is facing toward us. Let's go with... And to get this uh, Z axis to point kind of more directly towards us, I'm going to go to the orientation. So I use the rotation along those axes to uh, rearrange this thing here and I'm going to get orientation and oops I'm going to do the Z orientation here on the end and I'm going to point I'm going to point that thing more toward us like that so that's pointing toward us and now the Y is up and the X is down so I kind of took that ground and faced it straight up like this guy right here now we're going to have to create a uh, some, some sort of video and actually if we look at this here shift question mark zooms back out uh, you'll notice that that thing locks to the ground right there, that uh, solid locks to the ground, and it does it throughout the entire shot. So it tracked really, really well, and it even tracks off camera as well. So there we go. Looks good. All right, so now we're going to take a, um, a still image. So we're going to use some, some footage here to, um, to create, to put over where this guy is right there. So I'm going to go to the movie file. I'm going to turn off my camera and my track solid temporarily. 
and find a shot where that guy is kind of not, uh, or, or an image where we want to get, um, take a still image and replace it. And what I'm going to do is try to get this guy, I'm going to do, do Photoshop here. Uh, there might be a way in After Effects to do this. I, I don't know if there's a content aware thing, but the content aware in Photoshop works really well here. So I'm just going to use Photoshop. But I've uh, got this on a portion where this guy, where there's minimal amounts of this guy to to take out. Right there, where his arms are all together, is like this long line here. Instead of his hands sticking out and everything, this will be easier for Photoshop to take care of. So I've got that image right there. I'm going to go up to Composition. I'm going to do Save Render As or Save Save Frame As uh, a file here. And it's going to add it to the render queue down here. Uh, we're going to tell it where to put it. Put this. I'm going to right now. I'm just going to go. I'm going to. I'm just going to do it uh, under my downloads folder. I'm just going to make a new folder. Call it music video, I guess. And I'm going to put it in there, and I'm going to call this Still Man, I guess. I don't know. And I'm going to save that as a Photoshop file and hit render. It just exported out the video. I'm going to go to Photoshop. Hit open, go to my music video folder, grab that still, open it up. All right, and this guy walks a, a range from like over here to over here, but we're, we're going to make a still frame of this whole image here and get rid of this guy. So we're going to go, let's let's grab our selection tool here, our polygon lasso, and I'm going to click, 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 kind of draw a picture around him. By the way, my feather right now is on two. So actually, before I do that, let's go up. Uh, 2 is actually a good feather for the resolution in this video. If you're doing higher res video, it might be like 6 to 10. But this, we're just going to do like maybe a 3 pixel feather. I don't know. Let's see how that works. I'm going to click around this guy. And Photoshop's got a nice little feature called Content Aware, where it just basically figures out all the pixels around. It's an object that you don't want in the image, and it fills it in from the surrounding uh, image. So I've got it selected. I've completed the circuit there. And I right-click, and I say... Fill. We're going to fill this up and it's with content aware. Hit OK. And it blends it in and it basically destroyed this guy. So sweet. And it took all these pixels around and just kind of filled it in. And then you can see the little bump there, but it's like you hardly can tell. So now I'm just going to hit Command S or Control S on a PC and save it. I can close Photoshop and go back into my composition. I'm going to go to my project window and import that image. Um, music video, still man. And I'm just bringing straight and matted. That's fine. No f effects or layers on this Photoshop file. So once this file is imported, I'm just going to drag it and drop it into my timeline here. And uh, we're going to create a composition out of it. This is going to make things a little bit easier to control this. Um, I'm going to turn this off for a second. Kind of look at the range where this guy walks. Because we've got to eliminate... It looks like he starts over at the edge of this house here and ends up ends up like going into the green past this little so I'm kind of making a mental note the range of uh, footage I need to replace this guy so once again he starts at the edge of this home and ends like right where this thing starts curving off over here so I'm going to grab a little bit extra than that to cover it all, all that region so what I'm going to do turn this back on we're going to make a pre-comp out of this I'll show you why in a second and we're going to move all attributes to the pre-comp Once I've created that composition, I'm going to double click on it. So we load it here. And I'm going to make a, a composition mask out of that region uh, just to, that we're going to be able to use to replace that guy. I'm going to start here by the, a little past the home so we make sure we get him in. Down to the ground here. I'm going to scroll across this and create this mask. He kind of just stops walking right around here. So let's see how this is going to work. Let's grab that portion of the mask. And now what I've got is a composition, let's turn off the bottom here, with just that clip in it. I'm going to make this bigger though. I'm going to go in and, and uh, make this kind of full frame with this with a, within this image here. I'm going to grab my anchor tool here. I deselected the mask, selected the clip. I'm going to grab my anchor here, move it to the middle, right there. I'm going to hit S for scale and increase this here. This is just making it easier to saving some steps inside of the actual final composition here. So I'm going to move this over, kind of get it centered. And this is what we, that's the chunk that we're going to use there to replace. And I'm going to go back to my mask. Actually, I'm going to hit F for mask feather. And I'm going to feather the edges just to soften it in and blend it in a little bit. And there's our chunk right here. This composition right here now is this image right there, all feathered off, ready to go. So I can actually delete that out of my timeline. 
and it's still up here as an object, but I've deleted it out of the timeline and just use the timeline to, to generate it and create it. So now I'm going to take this composition right here and I'm going to replace it with my uh, track solid right here. So we've got the track solid right there. I've got my composition up here. Uh, I'm going to select the track solid. I'm going to grab this composition that I created. You can rename this if you want to keep it organized, but I'm going to grab this. Uh, while the track solid is selected, I'm going to hold down Alt or Option. Alt on a PC, Option on a Mac. I'm holding it down. I'm going to drag this. It has that little plus button. Now when I let go on my mouse, still holding down Option, it replaces it with that video or with that, uh, that still image that I created. Let's zoom up and look. You can see that's replaced there. But now I'm going to uh, scale this up, make it larger, about the same size. You'll have to do a little bit of finagling here. And I'm going to turn the opacity down so I can kind of see when this is overlaying properly just a little bit. And now I'm going to, you don't want to mess with the Z axis, but I'm going to uh, use the Y axis and take it up. Take it up. I can see where the ground match is there. And now we're going to match this image here and get it approximately in the same location. Turn off my opacity. And now it's just like using your your x-axis, your y-axis, and your and your scale to get this thing to, to match this frame here. Hold down Alt or Option and scroll out a little bit and see what we're getting here. Y-axis up. If you hold down Shift while you're dragging your y-axis, it'll do it faster. See, now I'm starting to get that home matched up a little bit. It looks like my scale's about right. And looks like that ground's about right right there. So that's matched in pretty well. And now let's see what happens. And there we go. The guy is gone. Um, a couple other things that you could do there if you want to, uh, since this is a still frame, there is a filter called match, uh, match grain. I'm going to go to my standard layout here. Since that still image is now still, there's not like natural video grain happening, so you can tell it to match the grain of your video clip. So I'm going to search for that, type in match grain. I'm going to grab that and drop it onto my uh, still image here. And now I'm going to go under here and tell it where to match the grain. I'm going to say noise source level is coming from uh, this video file here, so I'm going to match that. I'm going to go to final output on the viewing mode. Let that render. And it's very subtle, but it, it helps so it doesn't, but it helps so it does match the actual uh, video footage. That'll take a little while to render because it's creating that grain there. But once it renders, we'll play it back and show you. There we go. And that guy is completely gone out of the image. So uh, that's the last time somebody will try to ruin a music video because they know that they will be destroyed or eliminated if they do so. Um, so there we go. Once this is done, you can actually go to Composition and send this to Adobe Media Encoder to export out your final video, or you can do it if you're on a Mac. Especially, you can go to your render queue. You can send it to your render queue and do a ProRes uh, version of it so it's lossless. And then you can take it back into Premiere or whatever you're using to edit, and you are finished.